Hi everybody, this is Brian at 3dmetaltools.com. Hey, I wanted to put together a video that would document the building process of this Peace Cool Shield Man. I recently received this and I thought it looked really, try and get the glare off of there, I thought it looked really, really neat. It looks like a pretty cool model. I'm a little bit intimidated by all of the red because of course when you have a colored model, the potential for scratching is, well, I guess the potential for scratching is the same, but it's a lot more pronounced with a red model or a colored model because the scratches really show a lot more. So um, I apologize because I already have the head built and part of what I think is maybe some rocket thrusters that go on the back. I'll show you these in a second. But um, I had some camera problems, so the very beginning of this just the head and these thrusters are already finished and I'm going to move on here at this step but I thought I'd just show you overall my layout here I'll scoot this back a little bit so it's completely in frame and then I'll move it back these are my knolling boards here and here numbered 1 through 50 and number 51 through 100 and we, we sell these at 3dmetaltools.com this board right here is a overall reference board that shows me um, uh, cone angles so this is cone reference these are cylinder references over here this is a protractor which I engraved on this I, I laser engraved it but I've actually never used it so uh, we're going to offer some kind of well uh, the date that this is being recorded is May 24th 2020 so you know, uh, as of now, these are not available, but I'm going to make some revisions to this just general reference board that I think will be very helpful, and then we'll be able to offer those. Um, so, uh, I think let's go ahead and get into this model, at least where I left off. The whole idea here is I just want to show everybody what my building processes are, why I choose the tools that I do, and where I use the tools that I do and I hope that you find this helpful so like I said I apologize due to camera problems um, I did not get the beginning of this recorded but this helmet is already finished which really looks slick I love models that have these you know they look like a I don't know hose on the sides that um, I think are really cool but this helmet so far turned out neat and then I already completed these what I believe will be some kind of rocket thrusters that go on the back of um, on the back of the model or the, the back of the head um, and so we are done with this page and then I've done part of this page uh, and right now I am at page four and these these steps aren't numbered but I'm pointing right here to what I'm working on right now and it looks like these pieces part number 15 is going to attach to part number 16 so I when I build I like to use a jeweler's block which is basically just a big hunk of steel and that gives me a very solid surface to work on. I like to have this uh, on the side of my bench and then a lot of times when I find the necessary parts, so here's part number 15, I need to do two of these. I put them on the jeweler's block as like a staging area so I know that these parts are what I should be working with and then I know that I'm going to need part number 16 and there are two of them um, I have a set of tweezers that are magnetized. So I have this magnetizer and demagnetizer. I like to magnetize my tweezers. I like to have a set that is magnetized and a set that is demagnetized. So I can simply reach over to my knolling boards and there's my part. Um, I don't need to slide it off the table and risk it falling on the floor. I just pick, pick it up with these magnetized tweezers. The other advantage of magnetizing your tweezers is that if you're hanging onto this piece and you're trying to assemble it and you lose your grip, well, guess what? It's not going to go anywhere. Um, and the magnetizer and demagnetizer, it can be, you can use tricks to kind of adjust the power of the magnetization, if that's a word. 
I can fully I can fully magnetize it by going through the magnetizing hole, and then I can partially demagnetize it by going part way through the demagnetizing hole, and then I can check and adjust and check and adjust because I don't really want these to be super powerful with with uh, its magnetic power. I want it to just barely pick up little tiny parts, just like that. Now it's not going to work when you have a lot of the gold colored models are brass and of course that's a non-ferrous metal but uh, for ferrous metals uh, magnetizing my tweezers I think is a very very good idea and those magnetizers slash demagnetizers are available on 3dmetaltools.com so let's get to this part number 15 and I need to take this part and bend these ends down and make it fit into part number 16 so my preferred tool for this is going to be chain nose pliers. Um, uh, if you're not familiar with chain nose pliers, they essentially have flat jaws on the inside and then rounded jaws on the outside. I like this short version, um, although I don't have any qualms with this long version, but for general tasks, the short uh, chain nose pliers will give me the, the tightest grip because they'll give me the most leverage. These, however, have a much smaller tip and so I can reach into more difficult to reach places because this tip is so small. So my preferred tool for this is going to be chain nose pliers and let me get my magnification. What I'm going to do here is, you always want to look ahead. So I know that these four tabs are going to need to go into these four inner slots, right? So what I want to do, I know that I need to make a compound. Um, I know that I need to make a compound bend on this, and by that I mean there's two angles. So here's the first angle, then here's the second angle. So that looks right to me, but I'm not sure if it is. So to make sure that it is, I'm going to do this with both of the tabs that need to mate into the respective slots. And then I will take the piece and match it up. So I will now figure out if that bend that I just made is correct. And it looks awfully close. Um, Good, that's about right. So now that I size that up, I can get an idea as to how the rest should also be bent. And you know what? I'm going to use the longer chain nose pliers that have the smaller tips because this is a pretty difficult to reach spot. So one bend, two bend. One bend, second bend. And what I'm doing is I'm continuously mimicking the exact bends that I made in the first one because I already test fitted it I know that it's going to fit really well. I'm going to start working from this side because I can use the other one as a model as well. So basically, the first time when I, when I sized up the bends as to what was needed for this part, that gave me, because I know that those tabs fit into those slots, I know what the right shape is for this. And then I'm using those already established ones to bend the others. And now that I have this done, I should have a very good mate to put these tabs into these slots. I have two of them done. There's the third, and then the fourth might need a little coaxing. 
two fell out, but three just came back in. Now it looks like the fourth. I like to use a craft blade very often for nudging um, tabs into place. Um, the craft blade will dig in a little bit to give you some grip. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend doing that on a surface that's going to be visible, but it's perfectly fine for this right here. Um, it says I'm allowed to twist these, and I think that I will twist these. Looking at the instructions, I can see that these are going to go inside these cylinders that I've already made, and that might be a little bit of a tight fit. So when I'm going to, I'll grab my normal chain nose pliers, I'm going to grab these, and when I twist them, I'm also going to bend them inward just a little bit, and that way I know that this tab should be very clear of that cylinder and it shouldn't interfere with it at all. And you'll notice that I am pushing as I'm uh, getting that twist. I, I, I want to push on this end into the pliers before I grip and that way I know it's going to be a snug fit. Okay. Now I will go ahead and mount this to the cylinder and because those tabs were twisted inward a little bit they shouldn't get in the way of these and they didn't I've got all four in a good spot here uh, the instructions are telling me to twist these but honestly I think they will look better if I fold them so I'm gonna take the chain nose pliers I'm gonna fold them back this way, kind of upon themselves. This is the way I did it on the cylinder uh, on the other side, so I think it's a more secure hold anyways, and I think it looks more appealing, and that's how I want to do this. So I'm going to actually fold these back. Now, they're folded back, but they're not flat, so how can I get these nice and flat. Well, this is a jeweler's anvil. I can take the piece to the jeweler's anvil and just simply press them down. I could have done this on the jeweler's block, the hunk of steel that's sitting here next to me or just to the uh, right of me, but I like the anvil because it gives me a small surface to work on rather than a really large surface and I'll get to why I would want to you know where I use the jeweler's block but in this situation flattening out those tabs is done very easily on the jeweler's anvil and this has many many other purposes as well besides just what I did here so now I gotta do that again so I'm taking this part fitting it to this one and then it's going into this cylinder using the fine tip longer chain nose pliers and this time I think I'm gonna do all four of these one bend second bend I'm gonna do all four of these and do a test fit that way I'll have more examples and they'll be closer together showing me what the correct bend is for all the other ones so by doing this test fitting There we go, all four of these fit, so I know that this angle that I did on these four are the right bends. So now I can go back and just mimic each one exactly. That way I know that they are uniform.
Because I test fit, all of these work really well. This one looks like it's a little wonky. I might try and push that with the with the craft knife, but you know what? It would be a lot safer for me to get these twists established before I do that. So again, I'm going to push from this side while the jaws are open, then grab it. Twist, I'm going to bend inward to avoid the cylinder. Push, grab it twist and bend inward avoiding the cylinder push grab twist mild bend okay that looks pretty good this one looks a little bit off I think I can get I'm going to use the bigger chain nose pliers just kind of bring that one in a little bit and now I think that they all look very uniform <clears throat> so now this gets mounted onto the back of this cylinder I have one two three four inserted and they all went together very nicely I won't complain about that so again chain nose pliers to bend these back one thing that is nice about the chain nose pliers is because they're round on the outside when you're bending a tab you can use the side of the pliers as a fulcrum so you're actually pulling the tab tight as you're rotating it in that direction that's one of the nice advantages of using chain nose pliers for an operation like this as opposed to tweezers you'll find I'm not saying that tweezers are a bad thing for construction um, but my personal style of building these, I don't have really any use for any tweezers except the very, very light duty, very, very precision tweezers. I don't really like using heavy duty tweezers to make my bends. Um, they just don't give me all the advantages that pliers do. Okay. Now, same thing, I'm going to take the jeweler's anvil and I'm just going to push these down so that they lay flat. I think that, again, folding these rather than twisting them, I think will make this model much more attractive at that point. There we are. So I am now at this step right here and I have that thruster. I think it's thruster. Um, looking at the photo, it looks like whatever this is, it mounts on the back of the model, and I'm guessing it's some kind of like a jetpack. Not sure. Um, Any time that I finish an operation, I'm kind of a neat freak. All my tools go back to their pliers racks, with a few exceptions. My chain nose pliers almost always stay out on my bench. But I like to get my tweezers back on their tweezers racks. I like to get the anvil out of the way. I want my area clean before I move on. The jeweler's block will oftentimes stay because, like I said, that's a very useful tool. And I like to use it as a type of staging area. So let's move on to the next step, which is here. It looks like we're going to take part number 20 and roll it into a cylinder attach it to 21 and it looks like you know, we need to spe pay special attention to this exclamation which basically that tells me that the tab needs to make sure that the tab is bent outward and it looks like that's the same on this and then that will attach to these thrusters in a manner that I'm not sure of yet oh oh I'm sorry I am wrong. We are not at that step. This is where we just finished. Now I'm going on to this. My apologies. I just skipped a third of the page. So we're going to take this big piece, fold it down. Um, looks like we're going to attach part E. I'm uh, sorry, part 18 to it with the engraved side out. After making all these folds, and it looks like we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side, and then that attaches to these thrusters. So let's get part number 17 out. Um, 
which is this right here. And then part number 18, which is this. And it looks like they want me to do this bend before I attach part 18, but I want to look ahead and make sure that that's really the right decision. Can I make this bend with part 18 attached? And I think that I agree with the instructions. I think that this is the way that I should do it because once this is folded, I'm sorry, once this is folded with the right angles on part 18, it'll be very dif difficult for me to grip this with flat nose pliers and make a good bend. So I'm going to make the bend first. Looks like the non engraved surface needs to be up. So here is where flat nose pliers are awesome. So I'll use the side of flat nose pliers and it doesn't look like this should be a 90 degree bend so I'm just going to get close. I'm going to leave myself some room to keep bending and room to attach things. So I don't want to I don't want to go too far with this bend right now. This is probably not where it needs to be but I want to leave myself room to get my pliers inside here when I'm attaching the next piece which is part number 18 which I have right here. Now this is where I am going to love my flat nose pliers and I'm going to love the fact that uh, I can register 90 degrees off of them. So all of these here need to have these edges, all of these bent 90 degrees. So I can do that here. So by grabbing this piece with flat nose pliers, because the flat nose pliers have a right angle on the surface side of them, and also on the tip, I can use flat nose pliers for bending perfect 90 degrees every time. So if I grab this, bend it down, I am now, I, I know that I just created a perfect 90 degree angle because I, I did it with the flat nose pliers. Now these, and I do have room, so these, yes, I can do both of these at the same time, eh, but there's not a lot of room here because when I go to bend this, it's the, pl the flat nose pliers will interfere here. So that's where the jeweler's block comes in. So now I can grab this, register 90 degrees off of the tip of the tool, and when I bring this up, I can feel 90 degrees, and I can be assured that that is a perfect 90 degree angle. This, this back right here, this piece, nothing's going to interfere with that. So I'm going to grab the whole thing. There we go. And now this, um, I'm going to grab my longer flat nose pliers, so these have a longer jaw, and I can, with these, I can certainly grab this in its entirety. I know it's flat, and this might be tricky because the jaws will be too thick. So I'm going to grab my, my original flat nose the, the original short ones because they have a wider jaw. Bend this part way, bring it down to the jeweler's block, feel 90 degrees, and then I know I'm there. This, I'm going to do the same. Feel 90 degrees, and I know I'm there. Now, I'm going to go back with these and just give them a squeeze to make sure that they are flat. Actually, here is a set of ultra-wide flat nose pliers, and this is actually perfect for what I want to do here, which is to come in here and just grab these, give them a squeeze, and by doing that, I know that I have made these. If there were any imperfections in here or any wiggly lines or if they weren't perfectly straight, they are now perfectly straight. So that part is done. And now if I'm reading the directions correctly, I can attach it to this. And hopefully, voila, because I did, because I bent those with the flat nose pliers, that was a perfect fit. I didn't have to fuss with that at all. All of those parts just came together perfectly because I'm positive that they're all nice right angles. Now these are supposed to be folded. I don't think that I want to fold them inward 
because they won't have the same holding power as if I fold outward. So I'm going to grab my chain nose pliers, come around this way, chain nose pliers around this way, chain nose pliers there, oops, sorry, didn't mean to get out of frame, chain nose pliers there. Now, um, in order to flatten these, I think in this case, this one's narrow enough that I can just grab it with the chain nose pliers and flatten it down. And that works fine. I'm going to give this one a little bit more of a bend. And I'm going to grab the jeweler's anvil to press it down. Might as well hit this with the jeweler's anvil as well. And press this one down. press that one down. Perfect. All right. Now, I'm going to be doing the same thing with part number 19. It's going to go on the opposite side. So here's part 19. The engraved side, of course, is out. So back to flat nose pliers, and let's start making these perfect 90 degree folds. These are the ones that are a little bit finicky. I'm going, to, I'm going to get them close, but I can't get them so close because the pliers are too thick and it interferes with the other side. So I'm going to get them close, get a wider set of flat nose pliers to get the final 90 degree established. And there we go. Again, I would like to now go back with flat nose pliers and just give them a squeeze to make sure that they are all perfectly straight. Whoops. And here's these ultra wides that is helpful for that too. Actually, I can probably hit the rest of these with these ultra wides. Good. Now, Theoretically, because I took the time to use flat nose pliers, register 90 degrees, all of these tabs should fit right into place, and they did perfectly. Back to the chain nose pliers, I'm going to bend them around. jeweler's anvil to lay them down flat. So that piece is finished, and now it looks like it attaches in this fashion to these thrusters. And you guys didn't see this step when this thruster was built, but I also used the flat nose pliers to make this right angle in this direction. And so therefore, again, these should fit like a glove. One, two, three, four. They all fit perfectly into where they were supposed to go. Um, now, what direction do I want to fold these? I don't... It's, it's telling me to fold, it's telling me not to twist, but hmm, I think I'm going to go downward 
So I'm going to fold them in. I, I oftentimes feel that if you make a compound fold and go the opposite direction, in other words, if you, so if I take this tab on this side and bring it all the way around, then I have a compound bend and it will likely have more stability in the long term, but I don't think it's going to make enough of a difference here that I want to bother, and I can take all four of these, get them relatively close, go to the jeweler's anvil, and just press. And now they're all perfectly flat. So, there's this whatever it is. I want to say maybe it's a rocket thruster of some kind, but now we're at this step. Okay, now, now we're moving on to the step that I thought I was at earlier. We are taking this cylinder, attaching it to part 21 and part 22. Um, I'm going to clean up all my tools. Um, part 21 and part 22 and there is an exclamation point that I need to pay special attention to to make sure that I don't screw something up here. So let me um, go ahead and I'm going to get my parts staged. So um, part number 20 is here. And then 21, you know what? I don't think that I want to bring both of them out yet because there's a huge exclamation point there and I need to make sure that I understand where this bend here happens, I think that I'm going to not bring out part number 22 yet for the risk of confusing them. So it looks to me like the big thing that I got to pay attention to here is that the engraved side is out and this, this tab here needs to be folded outward. So the easiest way to do this, I think, is to take a craft knife we go. So now it's folded outward, but it's definitely not perfect with a craft knife, so I want to grab it with flat nose pliers, press, and I know that I just made that a perfect 90 degree angle. So that piece is done. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to set these others aside too. So now um, <clears throat> I need to turn this piece into a cylinder. Something that, as of publishing this, again, the date is May 24th, um, I don't have all of my cylinder forms on the website yet, but this is my first prototype, and you can see that we have dome slash cylinder forms. Everything is done with this, and I'm ready to sell these except for the step mandrels. The step mandrels I'm not manufacturing. I'm manufacturing everything except this, and unfortunately, the virus has delayed a lot of my shipments on imported tools. So I will, normally I would um, say, hey, you know, buy this over at 3dmetaltools.com, but it's not here yet. So I'm being told that my shipment arrives in June, um, and uh, it's not that far away. So hopefully very soon I will have these um, comb, uh, sorry, cylinder slash dome forms along with those step mandrels. But for now, here's how I would use this, because the inside the form will be a sheet that has all of the reference parts, just like our cone forms, if you've seen those. And it'll be directly related to this right here. All of these are lengths next to what diameter you should use to form a cylinder. So I can take this piece and simply find what the approximate length of it is, and it looks to me like 700 is going to be a very good diameter. So here is my 700, uh, it'll be easier to see, I think, my 700 or 17.7 .7 millimeter cylinder form. And now because I sized it up, I know for sure that I can um, bend this around and it's gonna fit the profile perfectly. So let's make sure that I'm doing this right. Uh, the looks like this textured portion needs to be on the inside, and then this portion with the with the uh, lines on it, or the I don't know the the artwork I guess needs to be on the outside. So 
700 turned out to be maybe a little bit thick, so I'm grabbing 650. That's better. Now, I think that these tabs should probably exist on the inside. So I'm gonna take these tabs and bend them inward. And by the way, anytime that you get a chance, you have two tabs that you need to bend. So these two tabs at the same time need to be bent. I would always recommend that you use whatever tool it takes to do them both at the same time. Why on earth would you bend this one and then bend the next one individually? Grab your pliers, in this case I'm using flat nose pliers, and then bend both at the same time because then you know that whatever the angle of the bend is, those two tabs will be in perfect alignment to these slots. And in this case, of course they were. I probably could have bent those a little bit more, but that works just fine. Now I'm going to fold them. You'll notice that I'm giving them a fold with the chain nose pliers, but I'm not going to squeeze them flat with chain nose pliers. The reason is because chain nose pliers have flat inner surfaces. If I squeeze a circle with chain nose pliers, I'm going to flatten it out. I don't want to do that. So what tool do I reach for instead? Round nose pliers. Round nose pliers are pliers that have conical round tips. They are used for forming curves or working with curves. So if I get in here and I want to push these things flat, I can grip it as hard as I want with these round nose pliers and I can be assured that I'm not going to flatten anything because the surfaces of the, pro of the pliers are round. So they're, they're not going to deform curves. That's what round nose pliers are all about. Now this looks decent. Um, it's not a perfect circle, but I'll bet you if I get a cylinder form that is a little undersized and then take it to my jeweler's block and give it a roll, that'll accomplish a couple things. One, it'll flatten out those tabs really well, and two, it will make this into a very, very nice circle. So that's what I have after forming it on the jeweler's block with the cylinder form. Much more accurate circle. So it doesn't look like the orientation of this matters at all, but I need to find, oh geez, did a part go missing? I just bumped this. This is part number 95. Give me one second here. <laughs> uh, I gotta learn not to do this anymore. Uh, this is my Apple Watch and the magnet picked up that piece. <laughs> it's not the first time this has happened. Uh, there's been a couple times though that a piece goes missing and I'm learning that I need to look at my watch first if I, if I can't find a part. Um, and there was no exception that time. So now number 21 that's folded outward here and they're telling me to pay special attention so I'm going to I'm going to tuck this around underneath this way because it looks like the bottom of this is going to go inside um, these thrusters and it won't be visible. So this seam right here, I wouldn't mind that being out of sight, so I'm going to aim it down, um, given that I have the choice. So now, because I use the cylinder form, all four of these should line up perfect, and they do. They're telling me to fold these tabs, so my preference is going to be to do a compound fold uh, on this one, it'll be easy. Right here, this one will be easy because I can just fold it outwards and then press it flat against that piece. This one, I'm going to roll it all the way around. This one, roll all the way around. And again, one of the advantages of chain nose pliers with their round surface is that it's a fulcrum that pulls the tab tight as you roll this one I will roll around this way as well. Now these tabs aren't laying perfectly flat yet but I can get in here with pliers and now I can flatten them. However, 
Should I use chain nose pliers for this? No, because it's round. So, get in here with round nose pliers, and now when I apply pressure to flatten these down accurately, um, there's no risk of flattening out my curved surface. Now, I need part number 22, and it looks like I need to pay special attention that I bend this tab outward. The X-Acto blade is going to get it started for me, or the craft knife, and then flat nose pliers will grab it, and I can also press it against the jeweler's block, and then I can be sure that that's now a perfect right angle. Um, now this needs to attach to needs to attach here in this manner. No, how am I doing this wrong? Ah, there we go. And again, hopefully, because I used the cylinder form, this is going to line up with the tabs perfectly and this one's close. That went right in, and they all went right in. Okay, so now this tab I can pull and flatten against that sheet, and I can just grab it on the side there to make it flat. This one here, I'm chain, chain those pliers, rolled like a fulcrum, chain those pliers, rolled like a fulcrum, and chain those pliers, rolled like a fulcrum. Now you'll see that last time that I wanted to flatten out, you know, perfectly flatten these tabs, I was using my round nose pliers because I could reach inside. Well, I can't reach inside this now, so I think what I can do is just take the edge of some flat nose pliers and just push. Push. I probably also could have grabbed the jeweler's anvil and pressed on that too, but I think that the flat nose pliers worked just as well for that. Okay, so now this part will attach here, and I want to make sure that I get all this in here right. It's not feeling good. It's not feeling like I made a... Oh wait, did I? Yeah, all four of them are through. It's telling me that I can twist this, and I agree. That's uh, These tabs are going to be very difficult to flatten um, the way that this is... You know, I don't have very good access inside here, so I do agree with this. I'm going to use the long chain nose pliers because they have a better reach. Notice that I'm pushing before I grasp and twist. The reason is because then that'll be tight. Push, grab, twist. Pretty good. That's a cool looking part. So, we are at this point, and let me move on with the instructions and see what's up next. I think that what I'll do is try my best to get down to this point and that may be a good stopping point for this video. So as of now, I have this assembly of the rear, I don't know, rocket thrusters that go on the guy's shoulder, and then I have the head finished. And so far, this model's looking really cool. So let's keep moving.
I need part number 23. Looks like I'm going to fold it around. I'm going to make a bend and then fold this and then it's going to get mounted onto the top of Oh shoot. Ah ha 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 ha. I made a mistake here. Yep. All right. I mounted this part wrong. So Ah, uh, shoot. Um, no, it's definitely fixable. All right, well, you get to see me work out of a mistake. Um, whenever I am trying to retract a part or a tab that was twisted, you always have to look very carefully to make sure that you're twisting in the right direction. You need to go back in the same direction that you came from. Otherwise, you're going to twist it into um, a full 360 degrees, or you're going to go all the, you know in the, in the in the wrong direction and probably break it. So I need to look at these carefully and make sure that I am following the same twist out. Okay, so those are untwisted. and Let me get this part off of here. Now, anytime that you've made a mistake like this and you have to untwist parts, they're always going to be a little bit mangled, all right? That's where flat nose pliers will help you a lot. So these tabs are no longer nice and straight, but if I just grab them, squeeze, then I know for sure that I just reflatten those. And they're, I wouldn't say they're good as new, but they're fine. If I made the same mistake twice with these and I had to do this again, I, there would definitely be a risk of breaking. So I should have been paying attention at that part, but I did not. So it looks to me now, so like this, the, that V needs to be going Hmm, this goes downward there. The V is in that direction. And it looks like this is how I was supposed to do this. So this orientation here, coming to here, make sure that you're looking carefully. And that's that was my mistake here was, I'll have to go back in the instructions a little bit, but um, make sure that you're paying careful attention what direction these V's are going and that this tab is going to the rear, the tab that you bent out. So that's where I made my mistake and I'm glad I caught it. I'm glad that it's fixable. So we will go back here. I'm using this as my reference as to where it should be mounted and how the V's go in that direction. Those tabs are out, those tabs are up, so now I have this right. And let's try again. Okay, all four of those are in. So back to chain those pliers. And I'm going to twist one, and I'm going to triple check. Um, that's all correct. All right, now I'm confident. Push, grab, twist. Push, grab, twist. Push, grab, twist. Much better, much better, much better. Okay, let's move on to part number 23. So part number 23, I'm gonna bend this portion into a curve and then mate it with uh, the sides. The sides will bend down to mate and tell me that I can do that as a fold. Well, let's get a cylinder form. Um, again, as of publishing this, not available yet, but they're on the way, hopefully in June. I'm going to grab a cylinder form and I'm going to, in this case, this is 700 or 17.7 .7 millimeters, and I'm going to line it up next to the piece to match the curvature, because then I know exactly what this bend needs to be. 
that's always very helpful. Any time that you're making a bend of any kind, there's always, without, I mean, almost, I'm sure it's without exception, there's, without exception, it's always going to mate to another piece, whether it's integral to the piece that you're working with right then, or if it's going to mate with another piece that it's going to attach to later, always, before you make a bend, check and see what it's going to mate with and use some kind of a reference to that piece to make sure that you're making the correct bend. So in this case, by doing this, that should be the correct curvature. Now I do find metal will always spring back. So even though that looks to be just about the perfect size for the curve, I'm gonna go to one size smaller and that is 650 or 15, uh, sorry, 16.5 millimeters. And I'm gonna use this to refine it just a little bit more. Because the metal springs back after it's been bent, if you bend a little bit farther than what's really intended, then you will likely get the bend perfect because it'll spring back to the shape that you need by using one that is just a little bit um, smaller. Okay, so now this is going to be a very long bend. So what tool do I have that would work well with this? Well, let's go with these extra long needle nose pliers. Uh, these have very long jaws and will be perfect for this. Now, the disadvantage of using these is that I can't register 90 degrees because they are, they are, uh, you know, the same same profile as chain nose pliers. But I don't think that's going to matter too much here because I'm not sure if this should even be a 90 degree bend. Uh, it looks like it probably should be, but I can certainly eyeball it. And I'm going to know when to stop because it will match the profile here. So. Got to be careful because down here at the bottom, the thickness of the pliers are getting in the way. Okay. And there we go. That actually looks really nice. So thanks to the cylinder form, that curvature matched perfectly. I went a little farther than what it actually called for, knowing that it would spring back a little bit. And then this also has a very nice bend to it. Saying that I can fold these, um, fold them downward or fold them compound upwards. Uh, let me decide. I think I will do compound upwards, um, knowing that I can flatten them on the jeweler's manual. So, uh, sorry, the jeweler's anvil. Um, round nose pliers, rolling as a fulcrum round nose plier, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, chain nose pliers, chain nose pliers is what I meant, rounding this way. Now these, this portion here isn't curved that severely, so I can just get my pliers in here and flatten them by squeezing. Maybe not super tight, um, but it looks like that portion is pretty straight, so by using the chain nose pliers, I'm not really creating any kind of a bend. And this time, instead of using the, the jeweler's anvil, I'll just use the jeweler's block because there's, there's nothing obstructing. So I'm gonna flatten those tabs on the jeweler's block. Done. That's a cool looking piece. So now this will mount. Looks like I've got four tabs that will go into these four slots. And the fit on them, there we go. That's really nice. It's telling me to twist these, but hmm, I think the twists will look really ugly if I do a compound reverse bend. I don't think it's going to look very good either, so I'm going to go with, I'm actually, I'd like to bend these both at the same, bend these tabs both at the same time, so I'm going to grab flat nose pliers, and in the same manner as the chain nose pliers, I can bend them and the edge will be a fulcrum that pulls the part tight. And the same thing here, so I'm bending both of these at the same time. Push before I grab, and now these pieces, I can push them down. I think I'd rather use the, 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 
the jeweler's anvil here because then I can get a better grip on the sides. Oh, sorry. Get a better grip on the sides here. So those tabs are now flattened nicely. Moving on. Organize my tools, get things back on their racks because I hate not being organized and then I can't find a tool and it drives me crazy. So this is going to be part number 24, which is this. And it looks like there's a lot of complex bends going on with this one. So let's have a look here. Looks like looks like this bend is certainly a 90 degree angle. That's probably the one I would want to do first. And then this will come down and it appears that I can use um, basically the overall shape to determine how those bends are going to work because this is going to be the guy's chest plate from what I can tell. So let's start off with that 90 degree bend right here and it's going to be this. I'm grabbing flat nose pliers and I'm using the long jaw flat nose pliers because they can reach the entire length of the bend. Make sure that I've got the engraved side up. I do. I would hate to make all these bends and then realize that I got it wrong. So yes, engraved side up. This is going to be 90 degrees from what I can tell. By pressing on the flat nose pliers using the side, I can ensure that I just made a perfect 90 degree bend. Um, now this, I'm sure, is not going to be 90 degrees. It definitely should not be. I'm not going to do a full bend yet, and because it'll certainly be defined by the rest of the parts as we move along. This certainly comes down. That certainly comes down. This. So right now, what I'm doing essentially is just kind of getting the bends in place that I know will exist in certain areas and getting them rolling. It doesn't show me, but obviously I need to bend this as well. So these here, I think I'd rather use wider flat nose pliers, wider tip, I should say, for this operation anyways. Bringing this down, this here. Now I can tell that this piece needs to come down and then these need to come in because all of this obviously will come together without seams and um, I'm going to bring this piece underneath, bring this bend back up, that just fit in exactly as it should, and that just fit in exactly as it should, very nice. And I am going to do, it says that I should fold these, and I agree. I would like to do kind of like a compound fold on these. So chain those pliers, using rolling to use as a fulcrum. And, because, and now I can just take the chain those pliers and just smash it down because there's nothing in the way, and that's a flat surface anyways. Again, roll this around and flatten. That doesn't seem to be completely without a gap, but I'm not sure I want to go monkey around with it yet. I think I'd rather get later into this build before I decide exactly how that should be seamless, because if this is the chest plate, obviously once I attach the arms, then I'm going to be able to tell whether or not I've done all of this correctly. So it looks like we're good there. Um, moving down here. Oh, wow. So, oh, I got it. I got it. Okay. Sorry. I wasn't seeing that correctly. Moving down here, we are going to attach this to the back of the chest plate with these four pieces and this is a good example where maybe I should have waited on this 90 degree bend because now this 90 degree bend here because now it's going to be difficult to get pliers inside here 
I'm a, it says that I can twist these and I agree the twist is a good idea. Now remember, these tabs that I'm putting on right now are the ones that were um, that were inserted in the wrong spot, so they've been twisted once already. And this is a li I'm not sure about this. What's going on? Because these thrusters are getting in the way. I didn't make any mistakes there, but it looks as if looks as if these thrusters weren't engineered to fit in here. Unless I'm doing this wrong, let me get these these tabs into place first and see what I got. I'm thinking that that's just how they're supposed to be. I know I didn't do anything wrong there, so um, this is a spot where I might want to look at the... unfortunately it doesn't show me the back of this model. I'm thinking that these thrusters just don't sit flat. I think that they're supposed to be that way. That's the best that I can figure, but I don't like the way that it looks. I haven't done anything wrong. Nothing's going to bend out of the way. To give it more clearance, so why would these things have... Looks to me like that's just the way it is. feel good enough to commit to this, but I'm a little bit nervous because these tabs were already twisted once, you know? So if I mess this up, or if this isn't the way it's really supposed to be, then I'm going to have a heck of a time, and I could be dealing with a break. But this is exactly it. Um, I know that it is. So let's go ahead. In this situation, I have bent nose pliers. Had I been thinking ahead a little better, I wouldn't have made that 90 degree fold before I attached this. But the bent nose pliers just saved me. So there we go. And like I said, I, I know that this is right. It's just that it looks like these rockets just splay a little bit. All right. Good enough. At least I hope. You know what can notoriously happen is that you don't realize that that's not how it's supposed to be until way later on in the model. So I don't see anything that I've done wrong, though. So I have to assume that I've... built this whole thing correctly. Hmm. Alright, we'll see as we move on. So, now, we're going to take part number 25. And, uh, it looks like it should be a 90 degree bend. So, um, flat nose pliers. Perfect. Perfect. This gets attached to the front. And once again, you know, I maybe I should have been thinking ahead because had I not done these bends and attached these pieces before I did these bends, it would be a lot easier because right now I'm going to have to access some pretty difficult to access places. Um, that's where thinking ahead would have been a good idea for these. Um, these tabs don't want to go in quite right, so I'm going to use the X-Acto knife or the craft blade to kind of um, coax them a little bit. Eh, it's not that difficult to reach these. Okay, 
So I'm going to grab Needle Nose because they will give me lots of reach. Push, grip, twist. Push, grip, twist. Now these ones are going to be interesting. This is where I think that the bent nose pliers will do a great job for me. These ones are going to be tough to get to. So bent nose pliers in here. And there. And while I'm at it, let me show you guys something that I love about my light. This is the light that I use. And it's just basically a long LED bar. If anyone's interested in where I got this, it's on Amazon. Just a very long LED bar. But what I like about this is I can get it. Sorry, you guys never get to see me. Um, uh, I can get it under my chin. So right now, it's very difficult to get light down into this portion um, and see what's going on in there. Especially if I'm going to be working with it above my head like this. You know, so I love this light because I can position it. It's a very wide light. The LED bar is all the way, it's this long, and I can get it right under my chin. So that allows me to get lighting into some very difficult to light places. And I'll bring the camera back in. Good. <clears throat> so this V is in place, and now looks like I've got all that done there. Moving on to here, 26. Part number 26, and it looks like it, I doubt that those are supposed to be 90 degree bends. Let me take a look here, because actually, they probably are, but also what's nice about this part is that when I do bend it, the angle of this V right here will tell me exactly how far it should be bent because when the pieces line up, when the pieces line up, sorry, I just did this, did that off camera. When the pieces line up and these meet, that's when I know I'm good and it, uh, it appears that indeed this is supposed to be 90 degrees. Sorry, I went off camera again with that. Try and pay attention. Looks like there's a little teeny tiny spot right there that, there we go. <clears throat> so now this attaches to the chest. Oh, well, this is supposed to, all right, this is a compound bend. So I wasn't, I was not correct on that. It's not, it's not, it is not supposed to be a 90 degree angle because the whole thing is bent. I didn't see that. That wasn't super clear in the instructions, but once I went to place it on the model, it became very obvious. Um, now locking these, this one's going to be easy so I might as well get it right now. I can just use my regular chain nose pliers, grab it, twist and pull, and now this one, um, I think that my long chain nose pliers will give me the best reach on this, 
So push, I'm going to pull a little bit to make sure that it's tight, and then there's my twist. Okay. Yeah, that's an interesting piece. And now, part 27 is going to be exactly the same, but I learned my lesson from last time. It's not going to be a 90 degree bend. So I'm going to go ahead and do this bend first, bring this down, um, this one down until it mates well there, bring this little corner piece around too. That looks right to me. And having fitted the last one, I think I know now that I should also bend these tabs a little bit towards the chest plate because they're just going to fit better. This piece um, doesn't lay in the exact axis that I expected it to. Alright, so it's in place, and with this piece, regular chain nose pliers, but I'm going to give it a little tug to make sure that it's snug, and it is. Then long chain nose pliers for this tab. Ah. There we go. Looking good, but I'm still concerned about why these thrusters on the back won't really, you know, they're they're bent back a little bit. That's going to haunt me until I figure it out. But looks like we are now at the step of attaching the head. So here's the head, which again I apologize, you guys missed the construction of this. Very cool head too. I like it. Um, these tabs on the bottom of the head. The whole thing here, this neck piece, is tapered, so these tabs need to be going straight downward. So I'm gonna grab, gonna grab these and bend them straight down. And then it looks like all four of those went in wonderfully. Um, grab these from the bottom and going to give it a tug, ah, didn't want to grab, going to give it a tug, ah, shoot. Tug before I twist to make sure that it's snug. Doesn't want to grab them. Hang on a second. I'm gonna get in a little closer look here. There we go. Sorry if my head got in the way in that shot, but all right, there we are with this head and the chest piece, these rocket thrusters on the back that are still bothering me, but I'll figure it out. If I did something wrong, I won't be happy with myself. Looks like there needs to be a little bit of a bend here. This portion of the instructions right here, a little bit of a bend. I think that my Ultra wide flat nose pliers is good for that. I'm just going to give it a bend, knowing that I, I'm not sure exactly where it's supposed to be yet. It's obviously going to mate with, you know, a torso as we move along. Actually, it's going to mate exactly with this part right there. So, 
I think this is a pretty good stopping point for the video. Um, I uh, obviously a project like this takes quite a while. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. I hope to document the entire building process, but if not, the whole idea behind this really is to just get an idea as to what tools I use the most, which I find to be the most beneficial, and how I use them. And whether or not you get to see an entire model built from top to bottom um, may be a little irrelevant for the points that I want to um, that I want to get across to everybody as far as tooling goes and how I use tooling and, and how I approach building these models. So hope you found it beneficial. Um, we will see you on Shield Man Part 2. Thank you.